So before I start this review, I want to apologize for my voice. I'm sick as fuck right now, guys. Flu season is in full effect. So make sure you guys are staying safe out there because this year's version is a doozy. I'm giving this year's flu a 0 out of 10 do not recommend. Which is actually only slightly lower than my final score for the chant, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Double-A developers lately have left a bad taste in my mouth. This belief that because your game is slightly more polished in terms of graphical fidelity, that it's somehow earned a $40 price tag is kind of baffling to me. Now, I'm going to do my best to not be a complete fucking dick this entire review because I do have a huge soft spot for indie developers, but the chance is honestly probably the worst game I've played this year. And let me tell you why. First, let's talk about the story. The chant sets itself up in three different ways for a remotely interesting story, but then decides to go for the most generic and uninteresting route possible. Let me explain. So the game starts off in the middle of a cult ritual with you as a very pregnant wife of the cult leader. She suddenly has a change of heart as she's told to step into some portal and basically breaks the cycle. Fast forward X amount of years and now you're in the shoes of the main protagonist, Jess, on her way to the same island where this same cult is still very much in practice. Fast forward a little more, and I do mean a little more, like literally you've just gotten on this island and you and your new group of friends are all in a circle taking a psychedelic as part of this ritual to rid yourself of negative thoughts. Secret T opens your third eye. You will sense the gloom pour forth from your very soul. Let it pour as a cloud of negative energy forms. This prism was a gift from my mother, as the ones you wear are my gift to you. The chant charges the prism, tuning you into the energy that surrounds us all. Starting with Hannah, add your voice to the chant as we move around the circle. Um. And that's the setup. And at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, Gritty, I don't see anything wrong with that. Because you're right. It is literally the perfect setup for a B-rated horror movie. You have a cult. You have psychedelics. And you have a mystery baby. And all three of those options would have been excellent story drivers. But instead, the developers decided that a better premise was to put all of those options way in the back seat and make the game instead a psychological thriller game that takes itself way too seriously about the most cringy and forgettable characters in gaming history. And throughout the game, it just felt like there were multiple writers who wrote their own take on what the story should have been, and then they just fucking scotch taped it all together and was like, perfect, no one will see past this. I could honestly sit and complain about this story for hours, so let's just move on to the gameplay. Unlike what you may have thought this game would be at first glance, this is not an Until Dawn or Heavy Rain narrative choose your path type of game, though it does have little elements throughout. The game ultimately tries to play more like Alan Wake, which God, the new Owl Awake needs to come out. I fucking love that series. Anyways, I did a little digging into the developer Brass Token, and obviously these guys do have the ability to make good games. I mean, 
Mike Scupa, the creative director, has worked on some incredible titles such as Max Payne 3, Sleeping Dogs, and Bully, to name a few. So obviously the talent is there, but none of it showed in this title. The combat feels terrible. I actually popped the trophy Savior at the end of the game, which is the trophy you get for not killing any cultists. And I got this trophy, not because I wanted it, but because anytime there were scenarios where I could avoid the combat altogether, I gladly ran away. The game has some of the most dated game designs in the biz. Example case in point, like doorways that could easily fit your main character, but nope, you're gonna have to press X to slide yourself through this. The game also has some of the worst facial animations, voice acting, and dialogue in recent memory. Or maybe I'm just more forgiving on some of these other indie titles, but it all hits so much harder with what the game is trying to be. Time to leave. What is mine? Oh, no. Stop! It's me, Tyler Anton, your grandson. Your bitch mother abandoned us. What the fuck? Hannah, help me! When you're making a game where facial animation and emotion is at the forefront of your game design, it becomes so much harder to ignore it when it's this bad. Listen, I'm not going to just sit here and continue shitting on the game. If what I've said does not convince you to not buy this game and save your $40, I do not know what else will. Also, if you're one of the developers on this game listening to this review, Give the guy who did the art for Enemy Design a raise because he's the only person that felt like they cared about this project. The game's a 4 out of 10, take it or leave it. Hey guys, like I said at the beginning of this review, I am sick as fuck and I actually had a really tough time writing this script so I'm sorry if it's not up to par with the rest of my content. But I'm gonna go drink a bottle of NyQuil so I can give you guys better content this week. Uh, I got some good shit coming up, so make sure to stick around for that. Drop a like, subscribe, all that good shit. Comment if you have some games that you want me to play in the future. I'm always willing to do some suggestions. Uh, there was a couple from the last video that I've already bought and I've already started to work on. And, and we're gonna get some good stuff out for you guys. So thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys as always.